Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Monday, December the 20th. I'm almost wrapping up the year, uh, <clears throat> and what a month this has been. What we're looking at here is the arch pattern, the resistance level, and the dreaded H's. And so far in the Dow, we're down 548 points and 34,814. <clears throat> The 36,565 all-time high on the 8th of November saw a pretty sharp plunge down to 34,022. And then there was a very strong rally to 36,189. We've now had three red candles. The day is young. So far as a red candle, big red candle. And what's really important about this <clears throat> is that we are really, if you're looking at the, the weekly chart, see this rising channel? We went just above it. Then we went below it. We established very clearly a trading pattern that says the Chapman Weight inside track um, support level and propellant zone is down at the 34,000. Let's see, it's a, it's a weekly chart, so let's go with this week. And it says 34,233, 34, Absolutely key support. A break under that says you've broken this trend line, rising trend line for the very first time in a long time. And the support level starts at 34,406. So let's just say from 34,400 to the 34,200 level, that's going to be really important support this week. Does it take it out? <clears throat> Is this... Uh, a peak D alternate count in the weekly chart. I suspect it is a peak D that is going to be a little bit hazardous to one's wealth if you're ignoring the fact that even the Dow, which held very nicely, is starting to see some deterioration. <clears throat> so in the daily chart, you've seen the, the nine period today cross negative underneath the 14 period moving average. It's very close in the weekly, but it's a weekly chart. You have to wait until this Friday before you can make some explanation about that. And what's really important is that the upside now shows tremendous resistance at the 9 and 14 period moving average crossover of 35,430 at 700 points up from here. And then you've got this entire inside track repellent zone, the falling axe repellent zone. So that's the Dow. Let's go through the S&P. I'm going to do, I was asked if I would go through all of these in uh, great detail. I don't have to do much great detail because the charts are telling you. 47.43.88 was the high on the 22nd of November in the S&P. It pulled back sharply to 4.495.12. Beginning of December, had a very strong rally and wanted to do. <clears throat> it made a potential double top. These double top patterns have been so consistent over the past few months. It's amazing how that this happens. It rallies all the way to 47.31. It's called a 32, <clears throat> just 11 points off the all-time high, and then it starts to pull back. In the alternate count in the weekly chart. That takes you to the Chapman Wave up channel inside track repellent zone at peak F. And now we've come down very sharply. At this point, this not even an hour into this week, we can say that the week so far started off by going underneath the 14 period exponential moving average. Over the past four weeks, it's done there three times, but each time it's managed to close on or very sharply above the 14 period, the black 14 period exponential moving average. And look, <clears throat> For the up channel, this is a long term up channel. You know, I use up channels. I just take the outer lines or the inner lines and I try to join as many peaks as possible. I can also cut into a candle, but not very much. And it tells me that these are the lines that I personally are considering to be very important. 
and you can see this up channel line which is really parallel to the outer resistance line says that right here where we are at this moment in 45 48 if we start to trade on a daily basis below 45 40 that's going to suggest strongly that there's a good chance that by Friday, this coming Friday, we'd have done some damage to the 14 period exponential moving average with a chance that the 9 is going to go under the 14. And the MACD is already very weak. Stochastics at 73%, not very weak, but weak. On balance volume is still pretty strong in the weekly chart of the S&P. Monthly, we don't even have to talk about because <laughs> unbelievably, we came within a point and a half of the all-time high. This is still leg B with a potential peak B. But look at the E-mini continuous contract. It went to a new all-time high, G slash C, in the arch formation of the double top formation in the daily chart and the weekly chart. And now it's, it's gone sharply lower. So let's keep this in mind that we can sometimes have a disparity. I like to treat the cash as the most important because that has... Um, that trades, that doesn't trade overnight. And although I'd like to use every bit of trading a, 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 a price point for my charting, the core is really the root, and that is the cash. The, the futures are very important, but I'm treating it as the cash. And what it's really saying is that if this is going to be a sharp pullback in December at the close, then there's a good chance that January uh, could f form a high, and that will get you the S&P futures at a peak B. But let's just deal with one thing at a time. Let's go to the QQQ, the NDX 100, trading down uh, 5.62 at 379.25. Here again. So all the indices on the daily basis are in sell modes. Not all the indices on the weekly basis are in sell signal even uh, they've just begun at Friday's close. They just start a sell signal, so they're not close to a sell mode. But sometimes you can go almost instantly from a sell signal to a sell mode or a buy signal to a buy mode. In this case, I'm just prepared to wait it out. We are underneath the 14 period moving average in the QQQ Invesco uh, QQQ Trust Series is the NDX 100 uh, trading vehicle is the QQQ and it is down 5.46. Now what's really important about this is that uh, two days ago you already went negative nine period under the 14 period moving average. This has been the slowest of all. We've now gone to a leg C to the downside in the day. It doesn't matter where it closes, it's a leg C to the downside and you've got the arch formation giving a full uh, counter trend bounce and return to the price on the left side, which was 378.90, uh, beginning of December, and now we've gone under it. So this says to me, and I've said this to subscribers, we've raised a lot of cash. We are looking at this as a consolidation that could turn into a deeper correction. And we just, we just waiting we're on the sidelines with cash We've got our core positions. They've held really well. I suspect that this week they're going to suffer. Uh, we've just taken, we've just got out of one of our positions, which uh, I, I really wanted to keep it. It had a fabulous rally. We've made a bit of money in it. I just don't want to mess around. So I'll continue with this uh, overview of different markets as soon as I get my conditions out. I got about 500, almost 600 points. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. And as I was saying, the Q2s testing left side low. I suspect that we are close to these two a balance that actually holds for a little bit. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, let's go to the IWM where Russell 2000 made a lower low. It's trying to turn around. It's down 345 at 211.86. We'll see how this goes because what's really important at this particular time is that you've had, look at all these bars to the downside. Not very big, but big enough to keep going to lower lows. And, and we went below the 212.71 low. I think that was like the 1st of December. And uh, now we're testing that. There should be some kind of an oversold balance uh, at least this first part of the morning. And then how we hold later on is going to be important. Look at the TLT. The TLT, this is the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund, is down 52 cents at 150.31. Normally, you would see in a situation like this, money come out of stocks and flow into the um, into the bonds as a safety factor. We're not actually seeing that at this particular point. Uh, in fact, bonds are just uh, steady right here. If you look at the yield, let's go to the TNX. X. There we go. The TNX is trading. Uh, at 1.394, this is the 10-year holding okay in the H pattern. But I, yeah, this is a little. I wouldn't say it's a surprise because we've been following this very closely, and we've seen that money has not, in the traditional way, gone from stocks into bonds at this particular time. So we've got to respect that. And most importantly, what we really want to look at is um, over the period of the rest of December. Where do bonds uh, close? Where, where do the yields close? What's going to happen there? Is there going to be some kind of a divergence? We're looking at that very closely. Now, let's just go to crude oil. Crude oil is trading down quite sharply. Uh, not quite sharply, very sharply. Down 3.34 at 67.38. There's your dreaded H pattern. What is the dreaded H pattern? Let me just show you this here for those of you maybe new to my work. It's a pattern that I look at for years and years and years where the price comes down quite sharply and then it tries to rally. And then at a peak A or a B, it starts the second, first or second arch formation. It starts to turn down and then it takes out that left side low. Well, we don't know yet if it's going to take out. It's gone under the 200 period moving average. This is a really important moment. And it's important for three reasons. One is because if yields are going to tell us that uh, overall the money isn't flowing from stocks, weak stocks, 
into uh, the safety of bonds, something else is happening, number one. Number two is that if the TLT, uh, which is basically looking at the demand for uh, bonds as it relates to business, and if you look at, let me just do this. I may as well do this for, while we're talking about it. I'll go to my chart that has, I show my subscribers over the weekend. Uh, and this is the one that has the triple yields, the, the TYX, which is the 30-year uh, T bond fund, uh, T bond yield. Then it has the TNX, which is the 10-year. That's the white is the 30. This is the 10-year, the 14. And the cyan is the five-year. And, and what we're looking at here is that if, they start to narrow, then that's that's one issue. But if money starts to flow um, out of bonds, meaning bonds come down and yields go higher, that's kind of what you expect as the market weakens. That's kind of traditional, at least the way I look at the market. And the third thing is, if you're looking at yields, you want to also be able to put it together with, say, something like the home builders. And well, the Philadelphia Housing Index made a peak and now it's pulling back sharply. It's down at 487, down to 14. It had a really good turnaround from the arch formation, a successful arch formation, rallying up quite sharply. And then what did it do? It started to stall, uh, not last week, the week before. And then last week was, no, that no, was last week, red candle. And so far this week, there's a red candle. That says there's some impact going on in the housing sector that you've got to respect. And if you look at the iShares, the wood, this is the global iShares, global timber and forestry ETF, stuck in a range, but pulling back a little bit. So this is saying to me that in the market, the, the, the areas that were holding up very well We've got to see if they become vulnerable over the period of um, going into the end of December and the beginning of January, because they've been holding, they've been stellar. Even though they haven't made new highs, they've been holding steadily. And this is what I'm going to say. That's wood. And I'll put it together right now with the HGF, with the um, HG, which is high-grade copper. Look, there it is. High-grade copper at the lower end of the rung. It's not doing much. It's down 0 0.003 at 4.292, but it's in the lower area. It's not showing strength, it's not showing weakness, so we're gonna be watching that very closely. Now, there are a couple of things we need to look at. Look at gold. Uh, gold is uh, down nine at 1796. You would think that this is a safety factor and that, uh, in fact, what we'd be looking at is money going into gold, but I always like to put that together with the XLF. Well, the XLF, the financial, S&P Select Financial uh, Spider Fund, uh, look, yes, the Chapman falling axe and repellent zone uh, right there. It, it turned around to 39.40. It went to, an all time, to a recovery of 40.86 in October uh, 26. Now it's pulling back, starting to make lower lows and lower highs. And all of a sudden, you're looking at the dreaded H pattern that's gone to a leg E to the downside. This is the S&P XLF Select Spider Financial Fund. And... I, I've struggled with this. There's no other way I can count this, but at a peak C right there. Hey, I don't know what to tell you. All-time high peak C in a weekly chart usually doesn't break down. This one did. and Well, it hasn't broken down yet, but it's breaking down. It's underneath the nine-period moving average in the weekly. You've just flipped to an S, which means sell signal in the uh, weekly chart. The week's young. Anything can happen, but these are not good signs. And a leg D, peak D, in fact, in the monthly chart, peak D in the fourth highest peak in the Chapman wave, you've got to respect that regardless of what this weekly chart says, it was a peak D at 40.86 in the October the 26th in the daily chart. You've got to respect that the financials are under pressure. If you look at J.P. Morgan, someone will ask me, could I look at J.P. Morgan? Yeah, it just broke today underneath the 200 period moving average down 370. Uh, we've got Bank of America. We've still got it. I've been deciding whether or not we should actually get out of it. Every year we, we, we have it as a trade and it has a really good rally. And then we get stopped out with higher with as, as we go from a high to lower highs we get taken out and then we have this cash position that we go back in we've done this for five or six years over and over we've done it this year at 31 we got in uh, back in february it ran all the way to 48.69 
we got out the last one. Oh, I, I keep forgetting to do that. I had the whole weekend to do it, and I forgot to do that. Sorry. But um, the, uh, let's see, that's Friday. So that is, we've already gotten out of uh, the Bank of America three three small positions. Uh, let me just find it here. Uh, Tad off at 38.90, 39.79. And the last one was at, uh, what did I say? 47.48. Uh, for, for, yeah, that was just a, a, a point or so of the, the most recent high. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at this and we'll see what happens. This is just a sign. If, 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 if the bank index right now, which was acting so well up until uh, in November, uh, in whichever uh, situation you're looking at, let me just look at the XLF again. That high was back in October. Uh, now it's something to be concerned about. Dow's down 632, S&P's down 74. It'll be very weak. I'll be back in a moment. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. There was a question about volume uh, on this right side. So I, what I mentioned was occasionally you get a really heavy selling pressure in a particular stock and you get this climactic volume spike and price gap down, and that says, it has to be very particular, I, I should remember, there were three that were over the last year that were just fantastic. And then what happens is you get at least 28, you can even get 56 days of an up move, not coming back to retest that low. But in this particular instance with XLF, 
Um, this, uh, in fact, most of the ones we're looking at today, this is just uh, normal cell mode action. And even though the volume, you've got this huge gap down, the XLF is down $1.18 to $37.41. Uh, the volume spike so far is, well, the day is young. I shouldn't talk about that. But I don't see a, the kind of volume spike that says this is a low, maybe not the low, but a low, not at all. So it doesn't it doesn't fit. And usually I would not do that on an index or a, a sector ETF. I do it on a particular stock. I should remember offhand. I have all written down somewhere, but not in front of me right now. Well, just a perfect example of this uh, climactic low that can give you a really good trading bounce. Why do I recall it starting, starting with an I? Was it an I stock? Anyway, doesn't matter. So now let's go on. We want, we're looking at those different uh, indexes. And then I also said silver. I didn't get to silver. Silver right now uh, is holding. Uh, it's down 25 ticks at 22.28. The pattern is actually not that bad. It's off the low. Let's see if I, a silver at 22.28 over the next three sessions by Wednesday, I'd say, if it's able to hit 22.80 or higher, I'd say that that's good action. I'll give you the same with the gold. If gold is able to get to 18, I, I've been talking about the 1808 level, but it went over that. Now it's back under it. It's 1788, uh, 1794, sorry. If gold is able to close any day above 1820 says, aha, now money is flowing into uh, the gold area and you've got the, the bank index. I wonder if I've done the BKX for a while. BKX.X. Oh, no, it's not X. It's BKX. This is the Keith Brewitt bank index. Oh, I used to know. I had this all noted. I used to follow it very closely. It's like the XLF. It's doing the same thing. It's right on the two under the 200 period moving average right now, down 366. Uh, this is the 125.88. This is the KBW Bank Index Keith Keith Brewitt uh, index, and this is not such a great sign. Peak A, peak B, and only a C in the uh, daily and the monthly chart. So that's good. And uh, look at this arch formation in the uh, weekly chart. So we're going to be watching this very closely. Go to KRE. I don't think I've updated that. Yep. Peak G, uh, rogue wave, uh, a sudden spike. That's what it was back on the 24th of November at 75.78. This is the spider S&P regional bank fund right on the 200 period as we speak. You know, we might be ready for a little bit of a bounce intraday. But I have to tell you that there's, there's an open. I spoke about this the other day. Let me just see if I've got it right here. Uh, is that the, let's make that the Dow, I-N-D-U. So this is the pattern that we're looking at. I didn't show subscribers over the weekend. I should have, but I, I kind of, there was so much to discuss. I didn't do that. I spent, it was almost like another webinar. So the Dow, dark news cloud cover right there. And that was at that high that was made back in November at about 36,000. Uh, for uh, what was that for the Dow 46,484? I've got right now, uh, and then it pulled back sharply to a key support in the uh, channel. This is the inside track propellant zone, and certainly it had a huge propellant up into the 36,000 uh, 36 area. And now we're trading at 34,727. So the dark news cloud cover is an overhang, it's sitting there. I don't think we're going to get out of it too too quickly, and I would not be surprised if the major thing this week that we've got to be looking at is how does the 34,000 to 33,800, what was that low run? Right? I don't want to go all the way down there. Don't need to. That's 33,312 back in June. Now I'm talking about this low right here. The, on October, it went down to about 33,785. Yep, that's what I was thinking. How does the 34,000 level to 34,700 act as support in this particular phase. And certainly, uh, based on the daily and now the weekly charts, uh, the sell mode in the daily in almost all the indices is now accelerated. You've got sell. Let me just go back here. Just I don't want to talk out of turn. Let's go to the SPY for a moment. SPY, type it in the right place, and you'll get it in the right place. SPY. That peak F in the weekly chart and the double top, 483.54 on the 22nd uh, in the SPY S&P Spider Fund uh, on the 22nd uh, was retested at 
2.87, uh, less than a point. This is your double top, perfect double top. And now we're pulling back. And as I say, I wouldn't be surprised intraday. We should see some kind of a bounce here. But I think the way that we've turned around says that in the SPY, that 448.92 low is really important. Oh, I had a question uh, from uh, Martin down in Peru, uh, longtime subscriber. And the question was, why is the SQQ... Um, there it is. Why is the monthly MACD and stochastic, why, why are those rising? Well, it's the MACD. And the answer is that you can't use this as a, a proxy. This is the three times short the QQQs. We had gotten the down thing so perfectly at 582. The low is 569. And then we got stopped out and I never got back in. Um, this is the three times short the QQQ. Uh, the reason is that this gets worked off. You, you can't use the inverted with MACD and stochastic accurately at all. You can use the QQQ. This is the bullish side. Very nicely. And that says the monthly MACD still very strong. It's turned down a hair, but it's still very strong. The histogram is pulling back a little bit. Stochastic still at 90% 90, 90 that's fabulous. On balance volumes just made a little uh, M-shaped pattern turn around. But so far, everything here is absolutely fantastic in, in the monthly chart. Weekly chart is starting to show some technical deterioration, but not in the nine under the 14 because it's still nicely above. So let me just go back to answer the question. Because this gets uh, reconfigured at the end of the day and it always shrinks a little bit, the QQQ, uh, sorry, the SQQQ three times short, it's called the uh, Pro Shares Ultra Pro Short. Uh, sure, what's the full thing? Short, short, short what? <laughs> short QQQ, of course. I don't know if that, uh, they actually say that, but they did. Um, this is in play. It's formed a rectangle formation. It's still, <laughs> it hasn't even gone to the high that was made back on the uh, December, what was it, about the third or so? Yep, the third at 7.04. It's here at 6.83. And yet, look at the QQQ. QQQ is actually made is almost about 378.69. It's made a lower low than the left side of the H pattern. So isn't that interesting? And most importantly, what we're looking at here is, just give me a second, to that, to that. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, we were about to go to a break. I just got distracted for a moment. I had a question and I needed to answer the question. Yeah. So what we're looking at here, yeah, this is a one-minute chart. Someone asked me about it. One-minute chart is trying to go towards the 200 period. We're looking at 45, 47. It's trading at 45, 39. Got a long way to go. Let's see if we can do that. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Nations Hour. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, we're back. So a, a couple of questions. So uh, so the, the answer is that the SQQQ in a monthly chart is just diminishing, diminishing, diminishing. That's just the way it works. And uh, so the MAGD is working on a different basis. So you can't use it at all. Not not that way. It just uh, it doesn't work that way. So uh, because it gets uh, reconfigured at the end of every day. Uh, so that's the QQQ. Now, what's really important about this is that right here with these dreaded H patterns about to, to test or having tested the left side low, how does the market, it has two to three sessions to close sharply above the left side low. In this case, the QQQ 378.90, it went under it today, it went to 378.69, just a little bit under, but it is under. So that's the completion of the H pattern in the objective which says it's it's a mini arch that should come back and retest the left side low if it does that how does it do it if it closes sharply under it if it within two days i sometimes say maybe three it doesn't close above that left side low um that's very negative you have to now wait for a brand new buy signal to be able to get a, a reflex action all the way to the upside and we haven't got that yet so let's just keep this in mind uh, but in time, the queues have had such a speak. Look at this run. I mean, this is amazing, All right? Look at that up channel. You would expect that at some point, just nature alone says gravity should see this thing pull back to do some retesting. Um, so we're looking at this as an orderly, so far, very orderly move to the downside. Certainly not if you're looking at certain stocks. So I was about to go to the SMHs, but I got beaten in the den. It says, Basel, MU tonight, that's Micron, uh, huge implications for the SMHs. Yeah, so let's go to the SMH. The SMH, which is trading uh, down 2.96 at 292.33, has gone to a leg, C to the downside. It's not, it doesn't look exactly like an H pattern but it has all the characteristics going up and then fading at a peak a coming back down and then taking out the left side low the smh is the semiconductor uh, area and what we are looking at here is that uh, the 290.51 was the left side low today's low is 289 uh what are we looking at 289 is this oh it doesn't change so 289.38 and uh, this is a very important thing because we've got in the weekly chart an alternate count. It's almost like a right arm extension, and it's gone all the way to 318.82 back on the 22nd of November. And we haven't been able to break above that, not we, the SMHs. And it keeps coming down and make, making slightly lower lows and slightly lower highs. Uh, therefore, the SMHs to me look somewhat vulnerable right now. Um, I don't see any reason to think that there could be some news in the next week or two that's going to take it into the 320s 
above the 318 all time high. I do see a reason to say that it could close below the 14 period moving average of 288. Let me double check this 288. Yeah, 288.49 is the 14 period exponential moving average, this black line right here. In the weekly chart, the MACD's turned down, it hasn't crossed negative. Stochastic's turned down, it has turned negative under the, under 80%, there's a 74%. On balance volume did give a nice spike and reversal down, but it's still okay. But that nine in the semiconductor index, the market vector semiconductor ETF is still sharply above the 14. And if you look at MU, which is Micron, it's forming some kind of an arch formation. It had a round number, 89.05 was the all-time high. That same day, it had an 85 round number low. That's on the 1st of December. It's trading at 82.70 right now, and it's made a, a smaller H pattern within this right here. So all I can say is, could Micron be the trigger for a really nice counter trend bounce before the market comes comes down to test lows that it's making today? I think yes. I think Micron made an all time high way back. It was the um, uh, body and the neck of the Chapman Wave stalk leg formation right there on the 16th, week of the 16th of April at 96.96. Pull back pretty sharply to the 65 area. I would say 30 percent, yeah, about 30 percent decline. Then a sharp rally, almost to 90, to that 89.05 level, and now it's gone sideways. And this is Micron, which is in an area. There are a couple of semiconductors, as I understand it, there are a couple of semiconductors that are in areas that are very specialized, very specific to parts of the economy. Micron is one of those. Advanced micro, advanced micro devices was one. I think that's. Yes, but not in an area that is as important right now. This is from the chart that I'm looking at. Have we made a 164.46 uh, all-time high back as you go into December and trading right now at 139? Uh, you've got NVIDIA, an amazing company, also very important, but it's making low lows. It's just gone to a leg D. 346.47 was the high of the 22nd of November. 319 round number law. I said, watch that 319. That's going to be key. And here we are at 278. So this is saying one by one, you're starting to see the semiconductor area take a breather. That's all we can call it for now. After all the, what is it really a broken down? It shows signs of breaking down, but that's not the breaking down. That's just signs. And it's... Uh, uh, right on the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart. I am going to stick with this as, as a leg F. It could be an alternative count in the monthly chart. And you see that B right there? That was once when it was split. It was once at 202.76 in October of 2018. Then it split, and that same day, uh, October the 20th, October the 30th, this October the 20th. There we go. Look, this October the 20th. Oh, it's a monthly chart. How can I? So I should have said October. I shouldn't have said 20th. October. Uh, and now we're looking at October of 2018, where the low is 44 round number low. 73 was the high for that month. Uh, so you can see what happens with splits. Uh, I'd love to keep them with great companies. You can keep a split in place. Look at Apple. And all of a sudden you're looking at it. Uh, you, you're back to that level, 142 round number low, I said, at a trough A right here. Uh, that was at 35.50 after the split in January of 2019. And look what happened. Not only does it split, it goes back and then even above the 142 round number low. Oh, I forgot to put what was the high. Uh, the high was 42.25. And it went to oh I, re I don't know what the high was because I didn't type it in. And the the, the most recent all time high was one eighty two thirteen in Apple. Look here it is digesting these gains. All we can say is digesting the gains. This is not a, 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 a you know this is peak D. We're always looking at that fourth highest peak, but it can go higher. Look at leg F. Probably a peak F this week in the in the month in the weekly chart, and a leg G slash C, 
long-legged, look at this, long-legged doji candle so far in the monthly chart of Apple. I still say that I think that Apple will benefit. How it turns into profits, I don't know. But I think Apple will benefit from this particular environment uh, with COVID and all. It's just easy for people just to go to the site and get people Apple products. I think that's what it's looking like right now. I'll be back in a moment. We look at the IYT as we go into the break. IYT's art formation, dreaded H, down five at 258. This is the IYT, IC Dow Jones Transportation. Up. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So let's just look at this. The Dow's down 655, S&P's 82 in this final segment of the show. Before you go to uh, Larry Pizzavento, you've got a great, great, great meet here all day. Check out my open call. And I really must mention, one, I, I, I didn't do that. I, I, how can I forget? This is the Tiger dollar sale. Fantastic. You're looking for savings? These are savings. So if you are looking to buy a subscription, uh, any one of us, uh, if you're looking to add to a subscription, what a perfect time for it and what a market. This is a market where if you can get some guidance that is uh, cogent, uh, that's really important. Well, we're looking at the uh, Nikkei, which uh, was at an all-time high of 179.10 uh, back in early November. It's trading at 156 right now, uh, down 5. This is not a good sign. Peak D it's a, uh, in the weekly chart, leg D in the monthly chart, probably a peak. This is a, this is telling us that regardless of uh, what happens over the uh, uh, holiday season, uh, you're not seeing it here in the price. You're not seeing that Nike 
is sports and sportswear at there. I why wouldn't there be sales? I'm sure there's sales, but it's not showing up here in the chart. Uh, and the next question was IAI. Yes, we're still long the IAI. Look at this big hit down 350 at 104.77 peak G 116.25 all time high. This is the iShares broker dealer and security ETF peak F in the weekly and only a leg C in the monthly chart. Now, this is going to be very important because we are long. We're long from the day after the low back in 2020 at the 30 uh, at the 45 level. Um, we've taken lots of little bits all the way up. And the last one was 100 percent gain. Um, I th believe that was the best that we've done. Yeah, 100% gain uh, when it hit the 116.25 level on the 2nd of November. This is key. This is saying sell, sell mode in the weekly chart in the iShares, the broker deal. Have respect for what's going on here, folks. This is not a time to be. This is the time, as I said to subscribers, and what we've been doing raise cash. Check out my opening call. And stay tuned. Great programming coming up for the rest of the day. Just be careful. You could have a decent balance at any point. But wow, making lower lows and lower highs. Respect.